What's going on guys, I hope you're all well. In today's video, I'll show you how I calibrated the main display on my Asus Zephyrus Duo and determine if calibration is worth the effort and money. More on that in a bit or if you're fine using the default settings. Before I show you the calibration process, it's important to know a few things. First, you'll have to disconnect all external displays. Second, you'll need an X-Rite i1 Display Pro Calibrator. This, unfortunately, is the only calibrator supported in the Armory Crate Calibration tool. You'll have to shell out £180 or over $200 for one of these which is quite the hit on your wallet. I'll be using this for future displays so it's a worthy investment for me. Here's a brief snippet of some 4K footage before calibration so you have some idea of what the picture looks like. The display doesn't support HDR so calibration will be SDR only. With that out of the way, open the Armory Crate software and head into the game visual menu. Step into the color calibration tab and hit start calibration. You'll notice that the next button is greyed out. Before you move on, connect the calibrator to your laptop without setting anything else up. You'll need to download the i1 profiler software from the x -Rite website. I'll have a link in the description to the software if you're following along with me. Hit install on any additional pop-ups that appear and restart your laptop once done. Head back into the color calibration tab and restart the calibration process. You'll see that the next button is no longer greyed out. With that out of the way, I now want to go over the different ways the calibrator can be used depending on the type of screen you're calibrating. The first method allows you to measure ambient light. This involves placing the calibrator on your desk in the original out of box orientation. The second method is for emissive light measurements and this is the method I'll be demonstrating in today's video. Hold onto the sides and pull down on the middle portion to allow the head to be turned, revealing the lens that will face the display. Once the head has been turned into the correct position, it should lock into place with minimal movement. The side with the lens features a foam covering to protect your monitor screen. Unexpected but very nice touch. For completeness, the third and final method is for measuring projectors. You simply twist the head into a nearly horizontal position or at whatever angle you need in order to face the projected image. Before placing the calibrator on your display, you may need to adjust the counterweight. This is the rectangular block attached to the cable. Press down on either side to move the counterweight in your desired direction. Once you've got the counterweight in the correct position relative to the size of your display, you can place it roughly in the middle of the screen before you move on to the next step. This is what the counterweight looks like behind the monitor display. The calibrator should rest flat on the surface of the display and the soft padding will protect the screen from scratches. Hit next to reveal the calibration positioning window. Reposition the calibrator as best as you can so it sits in the middle of the vertical rectangle. You might have to play about with the counterweight a little bit until the calibrator is flush with the display. With that out of the way, hit next to start calibrating. You'll need to wait for the profiler software to finish the calibration. This will take about a minute to complete which is a lot shorter than I expected since I've never before used a physical device like this for calibration. At the end you'll be presented with a report. The key things to notice from here are the brightness and the average delta E value. You can see that the brightness is measured in candelas per square meter. One candela is equivalent to one nit, so the max brightness of the Asus Zephyrus Duo's main display is just above 370 nits. According to consumerreports.org, you need at least 600 nits of peak brightness for what is considered good HDR performance. Asus doesn't tout this display as HDR capable, so there are no surprises there. The average delta E value is 1.26. In simple terms, the delta E value indicates how colour accurate the display is. The lower the value, the better the colour accuracy. Ideally, you'd want the delta E value to be below 1 or as close to 0 as possible. My laptop's display has an average delta E of 1.26, so the differences in colour will only be noticeable with close inspection. I don't do much colour accurate work apart from editing videos, but I'd hazard a guess that this value is good enough for professionals. Please correct me if I'm wrong. If you click on the show pattern option at the bottom left, you can see the result of the calibration. Clicking on the after button, you can see that the only difference is in the shade of the blue pencil at the top left. It's slightly more purple after calibration. The other changes were extremely minor, which indicates that the display was pretty much perfect out of the box. I wasn't really satisfied with the single pass of calibration, so I ran the tool two more times. Each result gave me an increasingly lower average delta E. Checking the after result for the second pass, it looked like the only difference was a boost in contrast. For the third result, the after result boosted the brightness a little bit. If you take a look at the color calibration history, the average delta E is increasingly lower for each test. 
The difference isn't massive and I don't think I'd be able to achieve a delta E lower than 1 with this particular method. I'd need to have access to the lower level display settings in order to tweak it further. Here is a split screen of the display before calibration on the left and the display after calibration on the right. To my eyes there was no perceptible difference to the image after calibration. If you look really closely IRL you may see a difference but because the average delta E is so close to 1 you'd be hard pressed to notice any colour accuracy issues at all. This indicates to me that for the majority of users there probably isn't a need to go into the effort of calibrating your display especially if the display is on the higher end. Nonetheless this has been a good learning experience for me and I'll be using the x ray calibrator on future displays. If you guys would like me to look at any other calibration tools please do comment below. Feedback on anything I may have done incorrectly is also welcome. I usually do tech content on smart home lighting, TVs, laptops and any tech I'm interested in at any given time so please do subscribe if that sounds like your cup of tea. In the coming weeks I'll have some more Philips Hue related content coming out and maybe some PS5 related content. Thanks everyone for watching, I'll see you in the next one.